would like to kind of turn to Diet ID. Could you, so you founded Diet ID. Could you talk about it, kind of what is the goal and how does the system work? Thank you. I, I love to talk about it. Uh, you know, it was enough of a provocation and upheaval, if you will, in my life that I left academic medicine after nearly 30 years to run this company. Uh, I had an idea, an invention. Uh, I was working out one day and wrestling with something that frustrated me. Uh, and the solution just appeared in my mind and kind of unfolded like origami in reverse. It, it was uh, it was a very exciting experience. And then the rest is history. I, uh, with the help of many expert people, have turned that idea into an innovation, that innovation into a company. And here we are six and a half years later. So the, the, the mission is basically to make diet quality a vital sign. As mentioned earlier in this conversation, diet quality measured objectively is the single leading predictor variable for premature death and chronic disease in the modern world, full stop. I mean, that's incredible, courtesy of the Global Burden of Disease Study. So imagine if I were to say blood pressure is extremely important. It's a predictor of heart attack. It's a predictor of stroke. It's a predictor of mortality, longevity, vitality, kidney function, eye function, brain function but we're never going to measure it. We're just going to know it's really important, but nobody's going to know what it is. Doctors aren't going to know. Patients aren't going to know. We're not going to know if yours is good, bad, or in between. Nobody's going to be managing it. Nobody's going to be looking at the difference between where you are and where you ought to be. Nobody's going to be treating the goal. It's just really, really, really important. Good luck. Have a nice day. That's where we are with diet. I mean, ask yourself, has your diet quality ever been objectively measured? Uh, almost no one's has. Some very vanishingly small percentage of the population has completed a food frequency questionnaire taking 90 minutes or recorded everything they ate for seven days and submitted it to a dietitian for analysis. But it's a rounding error. <laughs> almost no one has their diet quality measured because the tools aren't designed for efficient, easy, user-friendly deployment at scale. They take hours or days, they're tedious, they have to be submitted for an N of one analysis. So that's what frustrated me. How can we live in a world where we never measure and know virtually nothing about at the individual level, the single leading predictor of premature death in the modern world? That's just wrong. I mean, my mission as a physician, both caring for individuals and in public health, is to do all I can to defend against premature death and the misery of chronic disease, to add years to lives, add life to years, I've got to manage the critical factors and diet is the most critical factor. Mm -hmm. And we only manage what we measure. So we've got to measure diet quality as universally as we measure blood pressure. So we invented a means of doing that. We reverse engineer dietary assessment. So it's not based on writing everything down as you eat for seven days. And it's not based on recall. It's based on pattern recognition. Uh, the easiest analogy is to think if you've ever gone to an eye doctor for an eye test to see whether or not you need corrective lenses, you look through the device, you may or may not know the name of the device, it's a phoropter. You see two images, and the question to you is which of these is more in focus, A or B? I imagine you've played that game, Richard. You can see I've got glasses perched on my nose. I've played that game. And you say, mm, A, A is in focus, B is blurry. Okay, and then you get two more images. How about now, A or B? And you basically do A or B, A or B, A or B, A or B for 30 seconds. And they say, done. We now have a perfect match for your eyes and diopters. And you either need correction or don't. And your left eye is this and your right eye is that. And if you need lenses, we have your exact prescription. We've done that for diet. So we spent years building a comprehensive diet map with diet type, on the x-axis and diet quality objectively measured on the y-axis. We populated all the cells of that map with all the different kinds of diets. So, you know, from paleo and keto and low carb to whole food, low fat, plant exclusive and everything in between, including a wide array of culturally specific diets, ethnic diets. We stratified all the diets into the same 10 tiers of quality with the exception of keto because we couldn't come up with 10 tier. We couldn't get keto to the, the top tiers of quality, interestingly. Uh, but all the ones we could, we did. And then we created multi-day meal plans and turned those multi-day meal plans into images of those foods and then reduced those images to the irreducible minimum in a technique we call dietary fingerprinting. So consider that this tiny little bit of me maps back to me and only me and all the world. So we thought, well, maybe we can do that for diet. Instead of having people look at a lot of food, try to process all that, 
what are the signature foods that capture this diet type at this quality tier? And we did that. And we actually, uh, we have a patent for the overall method. We have a patent pending for the fingerprinting method. And so what we're able to do is show you two images of dietary patterns side by side on the smartphone screen and ask you which of these looks more like stuff you eat, A or B. And you say B. We say, how about now? You say A. We say, how about now? You say A. We play the same this or that game for 30, for 30 to 60 seconds. Usually takes us about 60 seconds. And then we've got you. And then we use a little of information we've gathered from you to right size the diet and within, and it's the whole thing's digital. There's, there's no manual component. So the feedback's instantaneous in 60 seconds. We can say, gotcha, found you in the diet map. Your diet type is this, your diet quality is this, and your calorie intake is this, your intake of all the different food groups, vegetables, fruits, beans and lentils, nuts and seeds, et cetera, et cetera, you know, uh, meat, dairy, and so on is this, 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 and this in servings. Here's how all of that compares to recommended intake levels. And here, by the way, are estimates or approximations of 150 nutrient intake levels associated with your diet type and quality. And here's how that compares to recommendation 60 seconds. So we are going to democratize access to this information for physician and patient alike. Our mission is to make diet quality a vital sign. Basically, diet ID is to diet what the, the invention of the blood pressure cup was to blood pressure. We can measure this universally now. And that's not enough to manage it effectively, but it's the first key step. And then we are in the business of managing it, too. So we do other things. We help identify a personalized goal diet. We can measure the, the gap between where you are and where you want to be down to the nutrient level. And then we populate that gap with a personalized sequence of incremental adjustments to your diet kind of like a GPS turn list, right? So GPS doesn't just tell you generically, here's how to go north. It finds where you are now, asks where you want to go and populates that very specific route with your personalized turn list. We've done that for diet too. So we're on a mission to measure and manage diet quality at scale. And that's, so that's available through physicians and corporations. Yes, so, so we're, exactly. We're, we're a, what's called a B2B SaaS company, SaaS is software as a service, B2B is business to business. So we license to uh, employers running uh, employee wellness programs, health systems, physician offices, health coaches, dietitians. We're not selling direct to consumer. That's just not our model. Uh, mm -hmm. We think the best way to democratize this access is through the places people are currently addressing their health with some responsible professional mix. But but any physician in practice can license this. <clears throat> we have integrated into electronic health records. We'll be integrating into more of those as time goes by. So this, this is pretty much a turnkey solution. Uh, you know, whatever platform you're using to reach a population digitally, we can plug into that, embed there. And we can do any portion of what I just described. So we can just do an assessment. So you have this information. If you, if you are very knowledgeable about lifestyle nutrition, my colleagues in lifestyle medicine are, they may just want to know what diet quality is, and then they may want to do the coaching. If you know nothing about it and have no time for it, you're a busy physician doing primary care, specialty care, you care about this, but you're never going to be expert in it you can deploy the whole suite of digital solutions and we do the coaching for you digitally. So there are all sorts of different ways to incorporate this into the clinical workflow. And as a, you know, an internist myself who took care of patients for 30 years, I fully understand no matter how good a solution is for a given problem, if it adds to the work burden for a busy clinician, it, it's not going to fly. So we, we built this thing. So, you know, patients can do it on their computer, laptop, um, uh, iPad and smartphone at home. So when you send a notice, you have an appointment this Thursday, please complete your diet ID assessment can be there. You can have an iPad in your waiting room and they can do it there. Your MA who takes vitals can do a diet assessment. It's that efficient. So this information can be available to the clinician without taking up any time or interfering with the workflow, but it provides Basically, information is important as the other vital signs. Uh, we need to know what people's diet quality is, so we need to know whether or not it needs to it should be addressed. And, and the sad fact is, in the modern world, most diet quality is not what it ought to be, and it needs a great deal of attention it isn't getting. Is it available only? It's only available in the U.S. right now. Are you planning to take it? There, there, you know, 
Yes, we're committed to global deployment and we do have clients with an international footprint and uh, I would not rule out uh, the possibility of licensing this from us if you're in the UK. The issues are the very strict legal and privacy requirements, which vary in different parts of the world. And so, you know, as a small company with limited resources, the, the, the bills attached to, you know, clearing various uh, legal hurdles is something of a challenge to global deployment. So our, our principal focus is in North America at present. But uh, as I say, we have international clients have deployed there. So Yes, uh, there's a lot of interest in the UK. We're actively addressing that. We do have some presence there, uh, so I wouldn't rule it out. And uh, the, the other thing is with a critical mass of interest, it becomes a justification for doing what it takes to clear those legal and regulatory hurdles. Uh, so if you're interested, please do reach out. Interesting. Although I am actually based in Hong Kong. I mean, I, I am English, but I'm based yeah. in Hong Kong. At the yeah, moment. so... so so very interested in, in global deployment and committed yeah. to it. The, the other thing to note, Richard, is that the way this works, you know, again, we find you in a diet map hmm. and that map has to be population relevant. So, you know, for example, in the United States, we're a multicultural society. We need Mexican-American diets, Caribbean-American diets, and Chinese-American diets, and South Asian diets. But having all those different diets is not sufficient to deploy in the countries they come from. So, for example, in India, mm. there isn't just a South Asian diet. There are all the different regional variants of how people eat. So if we were to deploy in India, we would have to customize the diet map for India. Similarly, Japan or Hong Kong. Mm. So we've got much of Western Europe and the UK pretty well represented in the current map. But countries that have sort of prototypically differentiated diets, we would have to redevelop a diet map to deploy there. I think that would be true in Hong Kong, again, certainly mm -hmm. true in many countries around the world. Mm -hmm. Not that we don't have some representation of dietary patterns from that part of the world, but they're configured into a map more appropriate mm -hmm. for the adoption of that diet here in the US, you know, people who've been expatriated as opposed to capturing mm -hmm. all the regional variants. Uh, so that's part of the growth process of this company is we will develop affiliated diet maps for different populations around the world as we grow. Mm -hmm.